Hey everybody, it's Tina with Worth a Look. Um, it's been a while since I've done a YouTube and um, just a lot of things that have gotten in the way. Um, my mother's been really sick and I've, you know, spent hours and hours um, every day typically trying to, to do things for her. And, um, you know, when your energy's not right and you don't really feel like you're putting out content that's, that's not good or beneficial, I don't know. To me, it just doesn't seem worthy to put out. So, one of the things that I've really tried to do a deep dive on is what do I want my YouTube channel to be about? You know, how do I want to develop something that's me, that's more about me and what I have to offer as opposed to trying to do what I feel like everyone else wants to see. So I hope that the way that I'm going to be uh, changing things up a little bit will be things that you all will have interest in and you'll want to take this journey with me. Um, so one of the things that's my greatest gifts because of all the years that I have spent uh, running businesses and being, um, you know, at the head of, you know, um, places that I've worked, um, you know, I had to learn strategies. I had to learn ways to grow and develop and make things happen. And my greatest gifts in business are sort of understanding next steps and strategies and growth patterns and scaling your business and various things. Um, sometimes the way that I see things were not always the way that other people seen them, but at the end of the day, the goal for all of us was to make money. And um, I think I did a very good job of that for a lot of years, um, helping a lot of people uh, make good money. And so now the shoe's on my foot and I have a chance to uh, develop something and make money myself for my family um, and do something bigger than I ever dreamed I could do. Does it happen overnight? No. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today is doing some little tidbits on growth and expectations of business. Um, I know even myself, I became disheartened when I first started this um, because I expected it to happen faster than it happened. I expected there to be, you know, packages going out regularly and they were not. Um, and, you know, I would meet people or talk to people and they'd be like, oh, that's easy. You know, within 90 days, you'll be doing blah, blah, blah. And I would hear other people say, you know, my mother does this on the side and her mother was making more money than me. And I'm like, my God, I'm like trying. And so, uh, you know, I can't tell you that I never had moments of discouragement, uh, but I eventually had to put things in check. And that actually came when I was at Posh Fest um, this year. And I really began to think of myself as unique and who I am and what I have to offer and quit trying to scale myself or feel like I had to be like someone else because obviously I'm just me. Um, so I came back with a renewed energy and a newfound sense of, what I felt I could do and what I had to offer. And I just started digging. And honestly, since November, I am blessed to say that my sales have been consistent. Um, and I am so blessed and so grateful that I have boxes going out every day. And if I don't, I honestly get very stressed out. It's like, you know, something's going on. But I, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to sit here and say that I can't remember the last day that I did not have a box going out and I should have recorded that. I should have actually written that down so I'd be able to say this was the day since this day uh, I haven't missed a day of a package going out. I could go back and research that but for now I want to talk about growth and I want to talk about you know how a lot of people perceive success and you know we are in a you know, a very social age where, you know, you could post something on Facebook or post something on Instagram or uh, do a YouTube video and become an overnight success. Um, it happens to people, but do you know how rare that is? It is almost impossible to make your mark and become a success overnight. Um, so you want your growth to be slow and steady. You want to increase your sales and increase your your audience and increase your buyers and all of those kinds of things at a very steady pace. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people do is they want to go big and they want it to happen overnight and they push too hard or they go, uh, you know, borrow 
I don't know, a ton of money and uh, then they can't pay it back and they end up going bankrupt. I mean, how many brick and mortar stores do we see that are not making it? It's not because they didn't have a good business plan. It's not because they didn't have good products for people to buy. Some people just grow so fast that they outgrow their ability to meet the market demand or they have so much overhead and so much expectation of keeping supplies bought and various things that they cannot meet the demand. And the bank is just not literally going to say, don't worry about it, you don't have to pay us back, we'll give you another six months. The banks are not in the business of buying real estate and they don't want your products, they don't want your building, they want their money. They will tap you out and close your doors and sell it at a bargain basement price if they have to in order to, to get back any money that they can. So I encourage you to look at your business in, in, a, in a way that you can make this happen if you're willing to grow it and grow it in a steady, consistent kind of way. Consistency in any business is going to be the way that you're going to be successful. And one of the things I thought about when I was thinking about doing this is my husband and I recently watched a program of this guy who climbed Mount Everest. Um, and I mean, he was almost like, oh my God, I've never seen anything like it. He practically could climb it without any gear. Uh, I mean, he would climb up the edge of these mountains and it was just crazy amazing. Um, but he did it. But I think about any other person who has tried to climb that mountain. They had to practice. They had to be consistent. Um, they act, I mean, can you imagine how many days that they went to that mountain and climbed just a little bit? And then they got a little bit higher and a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And how many times they're like, you know, I've got to do X, Y, Z before I can get to the next level. It's everything from training your lungs because of the oxygen level to being able to train your body to take on that kind of, of hike. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people have done it successfully and, you know, it's sad to have to say a lot of people have died. Don't let your business be your Mount Everest that you died on. Let it be something that you persistently and consistently stay steady at. If you see that you've made a mistake, so what? People make them fail forward. We're all going to fail, but if you fail, fail forward. In other words, be ready to pick up and move on and don't look back. You can't, if you fail backward, you're falling back in to what caused you to fail. So if that doesn't work, learn from it, grow from it, and do something different, but continue to grow and move forward every day. Um, and you know, I want to talk a little bit about some businesses that we're all very familiar with that have had crazy amazing sales, uh, sales growth in the years that we've known them. Let's start off with Amazon. You know, I bet when Jeff Bezos was sitting in this one room place with computers and selling books and trying to build a platform to sell books in large volume, he started out in one room with one computer. And he grew that business to be what it is today. He sells a whole lot more than books. But that's literally where he started, a book at a time. And he grew that business. And he started that business on July the 5th, 1994. And look where it is today. He's one of the wealthiest men in the world. He's going through a divorce right now, ladies. Hey, um... But his, I mean, his ex-wife is soon to get 60 billion, with a B, like baby, billion dollars um, out of just the growth and the money that he has acquired that she's entitled to have. Um, and I bet in 1994, when he sat at that computer selling books and had a dream and a vision to be, you know, a large, you know, seller for publication companies for their books and to have, you know, a dream of having, you know, warehouses and, and being big. Do you think that somewhere along the line he saw where he was at today? I doubt it. But he had a dream and he was persistent and he started out small. 
and he sat in that room on that computer and he sold one book and then another book and then another book and then hundreds of books and then thousands of books and now millions of books and any other kind of item you could think of. Uh, and he did that one day at a time and consistently paced his growth, knew when he needed to take the next steps and he took them. Now, one advantage that Jeff Bezos had is, you know, Apple and Microsoft were already in place. And if you know anything about Apple, you know, Apple started out um, April 1st, 1976. Um, and, you know, we all know the story behind Apple and, you know, he was the company that wasn't meant to be. I've always sort of thought of him as the little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can, I know I can, I know I can. When other people didn't always see his ability to take this computer, which now is my favorite. I have an iPhone, I have an iMac, I have a MacBook, I have an iPad. You know, if it wasn't for Apple, I don't think I'd even want a computer. Uh, but back in the day, not everyone saw his vision. And, you know, he did a lot of things to conquer um, all of those mountains that he needed to climb and bust down all those walls that he needed to bust down to be where, you know, to end up making that company what it was. And, you know, Microsoft was also in place. And so you have the, you know, a company that had really engineered and was building platforms for computers to be, you know, if it, I mean, Windows, what would we do without Windows? I just don't even know. Um, but, you know, Microsoft started in, on April the 4th, 1975. Um, and, you know, they were in a rented apartment and literally in the garage of this place that they rented, um, they built those, com you know, those computer programs and that's how they started. And do you think that when they were sitting there in, you know, that garage building those, you know, those, um, software pieces that they envision being where they are today. I don't know about you, but, you know, I, I look at Bill Gates and I, I see the things that he does with his money and, you know, such a great philanthropist, uh, along with many other people that he's friends with and lots of other wealthy people are also philanthropists. But I think to myself, I bet when he was sitting in that garage building that computer cr program, I might be wrong, but I bet that he did not envision that he would be giving away millions upon millions of dollars a year and still need more tax credits. Um, but he did. And so, you know, here Jeff Bezos was with Amazon and he had the ability to have computers that were working smarter and working better and they were more efficient and they could push data and make things happen better. And as you know, the software and computer companies grew, so did his business, and the ability to run that kind of platform would not be possible today without a lot of technology that exists because of those companies. Um, so, you know, everything just sort of compounds and builds on each other, but it's still a consistent and growing business. Um, I can remember the first flip phone that came out, literally was in a bag. It was, they called, literally, they called it a bag phone. It was, huge, but it was the greatest thing in the world. It's like, oh my God, if you have a back phone, you've made it in life. And I just remember that being the coolest thing in the world, having this back phone in my car and I could call people limitedly, but still I could call people in my car. And I just thought that was the greatest thing. It had a big cord on it, like home phones. It was crazy, but wished I still had it today. It probably would be worth a little bit of money. Um, but all of those platforms help them to get, you know, things going in place. And now Amazon is literally one of the largest retailers in this country. Um, and because of that growth and because of the way that he grew that business, lots of other things have fallen into place. But the, the, one, the one platform that I really, really love selling on the most, now I sell on other platforms, I'm on Macari, I'm on eBay, I'm getting ready to do a big box of stuff that's prepping for ThreadUp, um, and there's other things I do, but we'll just mention those. But my favorite platform to sell on is Poshmark, because it's easy, it's seamless, um, and it's social, and there's something really sweet about being able to interact with people and get to know them on Instagram. And, you know, I've made some sales with a couple of really tremendously sweet people. 
that have given me shout outs on, on Instagram. And you know, it means something to me. It matters to me that I do something well enough that someone's willing to say, hey, I loved this, whatever I got from her. And it makes my day um, because I want to do it well. And I want to know that what I'm doing matters to people. Uh, anybody can sell a dress. Anybody. Anybody could sell a pair of shoes. Uh, anybody could sell vintage clothes, which by the way, I promised I would try to wear something vintage. This is a Doncaster jacket. It actually is full length. It comes down to almost uh, my ankles and it's got a pair of pants that match it. It's gorgeous. Um, it's a very uh, mid-range, uh, high-end line of clothing. Um, and this is truly, it's vintage, but it's amazing. Um, but anyway, going back to the platforms, when you look at eBay and you look at Poshmark and you look at Let Go and all of these other companies, Poshmark started in December of 2011. And, you know, I can only imagine when they were sitting down, you know, talking about this business and how they wanted to grow it. Um, I mean, I can only imagine sitting in a coffee shop with Tracy Sun and Manish and working through the ideas that they had for building a social network that was going to be one of the world's largest retail platforms. And you know, it's going to be. Uh, Posh is growing so rapidly and they have done this very organically. They started out in, I literally, uh, they started out in Manisha's garage and they sit there and you know, they had a core group of people um, and they grew that business one employee at a time. Each one of them would sit at that desk on a computer in a cold garage and they would respond to sellers and buyers. They would answer questions. They would work on kinks and, and tweaks and, and get involved with people. And that's how they did it. And look at them now. I think this is the third time that Poshmark is moving into a new corporate office. And, you know, their, uh, their ability to have venture capitalists that are investing in their company just continues to grow because the return on investment is obviously working out in everyone's favor. Um, and, you know, I think that having, you know, your eggs in a lot of baskets so you have the ability to make money just about anywhere you need to is fabulous. Um, but honestly, if I was making all the money I wanted to make on Poshmark, I don't know that I'd resell anywhere else, but you know, it's again, it's about growth and it's about revenue and it's about what you need to do to keep your financial house in order, not just your products. We can all go out and, and buy a ton of stuff to sell. I mean, you could do retail arbitrage. You could go to, you know, the Goodwill outlets. You could go a lot of places and get things to sell. You know, my basement and my house is full of clothes. Uh, from my previous career and you know, I've, we've got four kids and it just we got stuff But I say that to make the point that we can go in debt real easy. That's the easy part but how to manage your business so that your So that your ROI is leveling up and you are knowing for sure that you can feasibly take the next step to be successful and grow your business with the money that you're making um, and if you're ever going to get to the point that you're doing six digits a year, you have to be able to prepare yourself with enough earnings to have employees. Because I promise you, if you're doing $100,000 a year and you look at me and you tell me you're doing it all by yourself, hats off to you. I think that's crazy amazing, but don't know how you're doing it. Um, you know, I'm even at the point with the growth that I've had. Um, you know, my daughter helps and, you know, I, there's a lot of things I would not be able to do if it were not for help. So I think that we all need to think about scaling our business and what it takes to scale our business. And, you know, okay, so we're going to, we're going to have to like think about something a second because my Chihuahua, Samson, come here, is, has somehow gotten downstairs and now he's in my business. So my little baby is going to participate in uh, this little talk today because he's down here with me and I'm just going to love on him because he's my baby. Um, 
so basically what I want you all to think about is how you scale your business. You know, what do you do to uh, ensure that you're going to have success? What do you do to make sure that you are going to be able to be um, able to, to be to sustain and to be at a hundred or two hundred or three hundred thousand a year? Where do you want to be? Um, and that leads me to one of my key questions in this uh, YouTube series is I want you to ask yourself where you want to be in one year. And if you get a chance, just get a little tablet and envision yourself one year from now. Where, what do you think that looks like? And then I want you to think about what things are going to look like in three years. And then I want you to ask yourself how things are going to look in five years. And then really deep dive and ask yourself, where are you going to be in 20 years, 10 years? And if you can't see yourself growing and being something better in 10 or 20 years, the odds are that you won't make it in three to five because nothing is that, nobody, nobody, I don't care who you are, um, unless it's just a fluke uh, or you take over a business that someone has already started, you're probably not going to be that successful overnight. I mean, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, the colonel did not start Kentucky Fried Chicken until he was in his 60s, but yet he was flipping chicken and and cooking food for a lot of years and he came up with the magic recipe and one thing led to another and you know KFC is what it is today it's worldwide but that did not happen overnight and when he was in his 20s he was he did not own KFC um so i tell you all that to make one point if you think that tomorrow or 12 months from now you're going to be you know pulling down six figures a year you very well may you very well may but plan for that and plan your next steps and how are you going to achieve that what steps do you have to what steps do you have to put in place to make sure that you are successful as you grow and develop your business uh, those are just things that you need to think about and so that's sort of called scaling your business uh, and you scale it based on steady growth and what your expectations are and what you're going to have to do to make that growth happen so think about those things. Try to write it down. You know, if you have any questions for me, I'm really happy to help. I'm not teaching, you know, your master's degree in business here, um, but I do have a lot of knowledge on growth and development, and I'm just basically hitting some high points here. But if you can envision yourself 10 or 20 years from now doing X, Y, Z and where you think it's going to be and how you think you're going to get there, seriously that's an issue and you really need to look inside yourself and think about that because tomorrow's not promised but if we're not doing what we have to do today and steadily growing that and reinvesting profits into growth of our business we probably won't take it to the next level so i've got my notes here so um, i'm getting ready to wrap this up and one of the things i wanted to say is that my goal with my youtube um I think right now at this time is to teach you all growth and strategies um, and to talk about business ideas and concepts and to try to bring to you all a little bit of work on, you know, uh, fashion. And um, one thing that I've learned a lot about and not because of what I'm doing now, but just that I know a lot about it is fashion and how things happened and how some of these brands became who they are and various things and why do i know that i don't know it's just that i know a lot of stuff so i think that i'm going to um you know try to do some videos on various lines of items that i sell or that other people sell uh to give you all some little history on you know how it started you know sort of the scoop on it and so on and so forth um and there's a lot of amazing people that share their talents on finding items, you know, when they are out thrifting. I mean, they're, they're just amazing. And I love to watch them, but they are doing something that's their niche. It's their comfort zone. It's really what they love. And, you know, I thought about, you know, doing little things like that, but, you know, I've taped a couple, to be honest with you, and it just didn't feel right to me and I felt a little off and I think when you feel that way that's the way it comes through so even though I am you know being teachy 
and doing it from a business standpoint, I guess one would say. Uh, maybe I'm being a little bit of a professor here. I don't know. Um, it's, but it's who I am and it's what I know. And it sort of is part of my my soul. And so I love people. I love to give back. I love to help people. Um, but there's certain things I'm really good at. So I want to concentrate on that. Um, and so I'm going to do my best to teach you all things that I know. In a concise way, in an easy way, I'm going to be doing some uh, teaching on um, on brands and, you know, different things that have happened in clothing through the years and give you all a little bit of knowledge because sometimes it's the little things that people go, oh, I didn't know that. It's like sometimes I'll be watching someone's haul video and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that brand because we don't know it all. So I'm hoping that because we don't know it all, that I might be able to use the, the knowledge that I have and the skills and talents that I have developed in my life to know things and to bring those to you. So, you know, it may change down the line and I might change what I'm, you know, uh, going to do with this. But for right now, I think I'm going to be, you know, a little bit of a teacher. And this is my dog, Samson. Um, he's my rescue. Um, I love you too, baby. Um, he actually found me. Um, I'll tell you a little story about him before I wrapped up. Before I wrap up, he, um, um, seven years ago, almost eight years ago, was abandoned. He had been beaten. You could see his ribs and his spine. Uh, he was almost dead. And he came to the front door of a friend of mine, um, and her dog was barking his head off. And we went and looked, and we thought it actually at first was a fox, and probably a rabbit fox. And one of our other friends was like, no, that's a chihuahua. So, very long story short, uh, this dog would not let anyone have anything to do with him other than me, and I was the one that didn't want him. I was in the process of getting a German Shepherd, and I didn't want a little dog that I had to, you know, give so much attention to, and you know, all of those things, but he loved me. So I took him to the vet and got, you know, medicine and we got him better. And uh, he literally climbed around my neck and was hanging on to me with dear life when I was trying to leave the vet's office. And he became mine. So, you know, we all say that we rescue dogs and we do, but this baby rescued me. He came to me in a time in my life that I needed, um, I needed him more than I think he needed me, and I used to have terrible nightmares for reasons I don't want to get into, um, but from the very first night that this dog slept in the bed with me, um, I, I didn't have a nightmare after that, so I think that he's my gift, and um, I think that God gave me this dog, and I love him so much. Um, so anyway, that's my one-on-one -on -one with my little journey with my baby. He's my sugar booger. Um, but if you all haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love for you to subscribe. Um, and there's a little bell beside of it. If you'll hit that bell, um, you'll get notified when I do a new one. And if you like this video and if you like the content that I've given you today and, you know, the content that's going to be coming forward, I would really love for you to hit the thumbs up. I really appreciate you coming along on this journey with me and sharing some time. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'm really grateful for each one of you that take your time to watch my videos. Love you guys bunches. Talk to you soon. Bye. Say bye-bye, Samson. Say bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>